Lotte Cab Sports Print. So recently I asked Nomi Act, would you like to uh, see inside a British supermarket? Uh, excuse the noise, I'm actually sitting at a Starbucks right now. I've just come out of the gym and my gym is close to my supermarket so I thought I'd just take you around. I was going to do the intro inside where it'd be quieter but between the blender and the copyright music I was like... Mm. <laughs> So I'm going to finish up my uh, vanilla latte, I've got an almond milk and uh, blonde rose, it's my, my standard. And uh, we're going to head into probably Sainsbury's and I also have an Aldi near here as well. So I might go into both, I did actually try and film this yesterday because uh, Thursday is the day that uh, Aldi switches over their special pies in the centre of the... Um, in the centre of the store but I got there and they were still loading them up and it was a bit of a mess and I was like okay hey, I'll try it again tomorrow because I was coming back to the gym today but uh, that's why my face is my face today because I've been in the gym <laughs> and uh, hey, for those people who requested it I hope you find it interesting let's, let's uh, get started okay I'm trying my best to keep other people out of frame but there's only so much I can do because it's a supermarket so I think you do have Aldi in the US but basically in the centre of Aldi there's um, a mix stock uh, aisle that comes in just as it comes in they change it up every week and there's no guarantee what's in it and there's no guarantee what will come back into it you know so they tend to theme it um the other week they had like garden lawn furniture and stuff so it changes on thursday that was yesterday i'm just gonna have a look what's there today it seems like they're staying with the garden theme i'm really sad because stuff like this i need for my garden in saudi but i can't pack all this you know <laughs> and it's so much cheaper than buying it from Amazon or from anywhere when I'm go back, that it makes me really sad. Like um, they've got here, yeah, got some garden cushions and some really nice like lights and things. I would really like to have this in my garden back home, but it just doesn't happen. Just some really cute like well, pigs would not be allowed in Saudi, but <laughs> some really nice like planters and these these kind of lantern things. These are so cute and you know they're not expensive so it gets me exactly how expensive things in Saudi are because you're always paying a ridiculous price and then most of the stuff is imported as well so there's not a lot you can do about it it's just an expensive country but man I wish we had an Aldi. See just a little glass table just like this lovely and do you know how expensive these are in Saudi? I was trying to get I was trying to get lawn furniture right before I left because um, I had this idea I was just going to clean up the outside and use it a bit more because I've got like a patio area in front of my apartment. So I just wanted like a, a table and chairs and um, maybe a little bit of probably fake plants because I tend to kill most things I touch and the heat is just too much for real plants, but just something to make it nicer. And I was going to have to pay over a hundred pounds for a table and chair set. And like that table is 12 99 I was like, come on. <laughs> I also like this, um, it's really cute. I wanted to buy it for my niece, but uh, unfortunately they're moving soon. So we don't want to add any more for the move because she's actually moving countries, but such a cute thing. They've got a ton of like uh, rattan furniture, uh, hanging baskets, and like I say, all pretty good prices really considering these are just like pet toys and then kid toys, not to get them confused. I think this is adorable, you guys more stuff I'd just like to throw around my uh, classroom if I had a chance and uh, some bean bags this is new this week you just it's like a house for kids that they can color in just little things just cute things things you wouldn't expect but end up being really cute so these have been here for about a week and a half I guess they had a lot of stock but some really nice um, sort of illustrated copies of the Harry Potter books and um, some kids baby toys and things so they did have here a little while ago like a little sewing haberdashery section and I got some uh, just sewing kits and denim patches and things that were awesome so this is just the theme for today apparently it's a bit of a mess but it always is and uh, then we go into like that's for a baby as they're growing you can get them to hold it every school year I guess which is also really adorable Store and just clothing and stuff seven, please. So, it's not like the same thing I'm going to take home today but like I say I just always check in because once they're gone they're gone so it's always worth a look you can Store really save a lot of money seven, please. Well, <laughs> it's a little bit busy in here today so I guess they've got a lot of announcements going on so yeah it's just always worth a look I'm just going to show you as well 
This is just, I'm going on things that may be a little different from America. I was speaking to my Canadian friend. Well, America, other places. Sorry, not to be America-centric. I was speaking to my Canadian friend. She likes gin, yeah? And I was telling her about all the flavors that you could uh, get here. And she was really surprised. Like, it's difficult to get flavors where she is. And I don't know if it's like a, <laughs> a continent-wide thing or if it's just a... Uh, a uh, thing where we get it in Britain we don't in America I'm going to talk about a few groceries that are a little different here as well but here we get a ton of uh, flavoured gins one sec I'm just in the booze section <laughs> but if we come up to here uh, Aldi particularly have some really nice ones if you go up here we've got like pink grapefruit and rose and uh, bramble gin mango passion fruit pink grapefruit and orange this one is lovely. My um, my stepmom got that one recently, and we enjoyed it very much. So uh, there's lots of different kinds. Sorry, just had to cut off because I didn't want someone else's face in it. Uh, I generally don't drink very much, but because it's completely banned in Saudi, I decided I was going to a little while I was here. Uh, I got a really lovely rhubarb and ginger one from Sainsbury's last time I was here, and really delicious. Uh, so I've still actually got that at home, so I can enjoy that. But apparently like the range of flavors and the variety we have just isn't as common so if that's the case for you let me know i don't know if it's just uh i don't want to say european because britain isn't really european but <laughs> uh, i don't know if it's just things that are different across the sea i wanted to show you the cheese section because you get much more of a kind of european selection here because the reason they're a discount supermarket is usually because they import things cheap into the eu and one of the things about uh, in from the eu i should say and one of the things about us leaving the eu is for a while there was a sign up saying hey if you see that we don't have as much stock at the moment it's just while we handle the transition so it makes me wonder what's going to happen with aldi and its major competitor lidl which is the same kind of deal they get cheaper stuff in from the eu like what's going to happen with their prices and how they present themselves now because i imagine it's not going to be as cheap for them to import anymore so it's an interesting question, I don't know, but that's why you get some a variety of things you don't usually get. You get them a lot cheaper in here. And actually things that can be quite expensive and hard to find, in terms of deli items particularly, you find really cheap in Aldi. Something else about Aldi is that it's really well known as kind of a dupe store. So they do their own discount versions of the brand things. So for example, right now they've got a special on these. These are usually £4 a box and they've got them for 2.59 here. So that's that's one of the special buys. It's not normal for the shop. Here, this is their brand, like their dupe of it. And then it's 1.99. So again, a better deal. So, and they are exactly the same. They taste just as good. Like they have some really good dupes in the store. You see it particularly with, um, if you start looking at kind of like the chocolates and the snacks and things where there's like dupe Kit Kats and stuff like that. I'll see if I can maybe show you, but it's a little bit busy. I just went to the last aisle to check the, to be able to show you kind of the, the dupes, but there is a queue going from the one, uh, from the one checkout all the way up that aisle. And I was like, okay then, okay, we'll, we'll give that a break. But uh, yeah, they're, they're known for their dupes and their dupes are good. Yeah, for the price difference, like I would say go for it. Sorry, I just wanted to show you the flowers they sell outside the store as well. And <laughs> again, insanely jealous because fresh flowers and things like that, they don't last easily in uh, in Saudi. So you just, you don't get that much choice and they're all expensive. <laughs> I just wish I could take it all back. So we've just come into the clothing section because I took the back entrance in. And uh, so this is kind of their home and stuff. All their homeware, all their... Uh, all their clothing, shoes, kids' clothes, that kind of thing. Sorry, just want to try not get too many people on camera. Okay, there's no one in this aisle. <laughs> so just shoes, clothes, that kind of thing. Well, the Sainsbury's here is larger than a lot of them. It's a suit, well, not a lot of them, but it's a superstore. So it has more selection. But um, given that this was a talking point with the farm boy stuff, uh, even in smaller stores, it's usual to have uh, like toiletries and home goods as well not necessarily as many as here not like dishes and plates and things but general kind of home stuff uh, I understand that farm boy is more of a specialty store though so they are apparently just groceries but um, I was trying to think of 
an equivalent store that would do that and i suppose mns food but that's kind of fancy fancy it's not one of the major supermarkets the thing with the supermarkets is there's so much competition especially between like the big four uh that their their point is to offer as much as they can to get people in so it's quite rare it's more specialty places but i guess farm boy is a specialty place so I actually just remembered I needed a can opener, so that was fortunate. But uh, there's all kind of kitchen things and stuff like that. So it's currently a long weekend. Uh, Friday and Monday are both bank holidays. So it's a little bit busy in here, which is making it difficult to keep people off camera. If you catch a glimpse of somebody, apologies, I'm trying my best. Um, so I'm going to go through this uh, location. is currently doing a bit of reconstruction inside and redecorating. So they're widening up aisles. They're just refreshing the whole place. So there's a couple of places that are kind of out of order or missing stock or things like that while they uh, rearrange. So that's what you're seeing. Uh, they also, in terms of kind of COVID stuff, obviously I'm wearing a mask. They've got stuff on the floor saying keep a safe distance and they've got some one-way stuff on the aisles um, telling you, especially with the, like the booze aisles, the places people tend to congregate, telling you, okay, this is one way, you can go in this way, go out that way to try and avoid people crossing doesn't always work they're not really enforcing it but it's there so this is the new area they put into stall where they widened up these aisles they completely changed these uh units that were holding all the products are now arranged by um brand and it's just lighter and nicer and it's it's nice to have it's easier to walk around and see everything and i'm i'm enjoying it a lot i mean obviously i'm a makeup girl i like it but yeah so you've got a lot this is kind of the stuff you see more in superstores than in regular ones but uh, you will usually have a selection of at least kind of uh, toiletries, you know, but this has got a bit of a larger one. You can see they're just working on the um, freezer aisles right now. So there's one or two aisles that are actually empty, but you go up here and then you've got all kind of the um, in terms of counters and things like we've got, I'm in an aisle right now, so it's like the tea and coffee, but usually we have a kind of bakery patisserie there's a hot counter that sells like hot meats like rotisserie chickens and usually a selection of like chicken wings legs sometimes occasionally like pork like a roast pork or a ham hock that kind of thing uh but it's it's not a massive part and at the moment half of their counter is down because of this rearranging so there's only a small selection on but kind of rotisserie chicken counter that kind of thing and um this one also has a pizza place. So here you can see the kind of baked in store stuff, the cookies, the pastries, that kind of thing and the things you select and then the cool counter and uh, bread rolls and things. So it's all down here. But in the actual aisles, you also see, I to turn around the camera, but there was just too many people, but you also see, um, you also see the, the usual kind of branded bread that gets bought into store from uh, stockists. Um, I'm just going to move down to probably the fresh section and you can see some things. This is what they do for pizzas, they can make them in store. This is the hot counter, it doesn't have much in it at the moment. And then you go on to uh, kind of cold deli meats and things. Usually in most big stores there will be a fresh deli that sells kind of meats, olives, pickles. And uh, there'll be a fresh fish which where they can... Um, I was going to say carb fish, that's not what I mean. <laughs> you can buy fresh fish and they can either fillet it or, or you can buy it whole or what have you. Sainsbury's seems to have taken that out at the moment. I don't know if it's because they're moving things around or if they're uh, going to like reinstate it when the worst of it's done because that involves actual like refrigerated counters, which I'm guessing they don't have in at the moment. But um, I don't know if that's going to be a permanent change or not, but it's very normal to have it here. I remember being a kid, I was just obsessed with the fish counter. I used to run up to go look at it. My mom would be like, where is she? Oh, I know where she is. <laughs> they were stocking, so I didn't want to get the uh, girls doing their job on camera, but um, something that's really kind of expanded as a grocery section recently has been veganism and vegan veganism <laughs> vegan food and um kind of free from foods have been having a boost for the last few years for the past year or two it's been a ton of new plant-based options and that was what i was showing you there like that whole section was all vegan food um i just wanted to talk to you a little bit about if i can find it halloumi 
a little bit ago I was talking with my American friend and uh, she said what should I have for breakfast and I went oh have some halloumi and she was like what's that and again halloumi is something that's super common in the UK it's often used as a vegetarian substitute when you're making meals it's not a meat substitute but if you go to a restaurant and you've got a vegetarian option halloumi is a common one yeah and so it was recommended when I was right out of surgery and I couldn't get very much food in it was recommended as a food because it was easier on the stomach because it was softer because when you have surgery you go from like liquids that can pass through a fork to mushy to soft foods to hard proteins and dense proteins were a bit too much for my stomach and uh, I was recommended to try halloumi because whoops I'm gonna drop that um, halloumi was softer to eat but it has it's a cheese that you cook it's a grilling cheese so you can put it on skewers I mostly just cook it in a pan and turn it over but uh, it has the protein amounts kind of on par with meat so for this one for example oh, 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 let me find it so the protein is 21.6 grams and carbohydrates are less than a gram so it has the low carb that you would expect of cheese but it has the protein profile of meat so it's a really good substitute if you're looking for something higher protein and you can't have meat for whatever reason uh, I could eat meat post-surgery, but when I was just learning to eat again, um, it was quite difficult uh, because just just learning to eat again was difficult and that was easier to get down. But I really like halloumi. It's, um, it's quite salty, but I like sliced halloumi cooked topped with an egg, like a spoon of salsa. I find a really nice, like, filling breakfast. And uh, she, she had no idea what I was talking about. Like, if you go to sort of specialty cheese shops, apparently you can get it but it's just not a common thing and it's so prolific throughout the UK it's funny the things that kind of everyone knows and then the things that never make it over so uh, I would recommend halloumi if you're looking for a, a non-meat protein it's really delicious it's another example of the uh, vegetarian stuff vegetarian sausages Linda McCartney is a really popular brand for vegetarian stuff in the UK but uh, this Beyond Burger is, is a new one Beyond Meat I think I've heard it from uh, American Canadians as well. So, has Chantal eaten that? Is that that fast food one, right? At some point, she was at Burger King or another Wendy's, maybe, and they have like a Beyond Meat burger. So, I think it's the same stuff, and it's just now a global brand. But uh, yeah, there's a ton of choices for uh, vegan eaters that weren't there even a few years ago. Something else that has changed, probably in the year that I've been gone, year year and a half, I was gone even. Um, there's now in stores, like there's been a big drive to reduce the amount of plastic used in stores and although some things are still packaged in plastic, what they're doing now is they're selling you these reusable produce bags and then saying okay put your loose produce into that if it's not already bagged up and they've, they've made a lot of their products loose for that reason. You get some things like this that are still packaged up, you get some things in nets and stuff but then for most things, you just have the reusable bags that you buy and then you can just come and weigh your own right here and it prints you out a label. But when I first moved to China, so in China, you don't weigh your own produce. There's um, a counter and it's a manned counter and you go and you give it to somebody and they do it. And it's little changes like that when I'm traveling, I'm like, oh, really? And it was like in China and in Indonesia as well, when I used to go to the wet market to get uh, meat and, and fresh produce. Uh, it's one of the differences that, that I have to look out for whenever I move because it can be so different in different countries. And I remember just wandering around like, what do I do with this <laughs> for a while? Because it was, a, it was a weirdly shaped store. And so I couldn't see the person who was supposed to weigh it. And obviously I couldn't speak Mandarin. <laughs> So I arrived, I was like, I don't know what to do and I don't know who to ask, you know? So I ended up just looking around and watching people for a bit and then figuring, I was like, oh, that, that, that's where they're going. I just kind of followed somebody, trying not to look like a stalker, um, to be like, where are they taking their produce? Because I thought maybe you could go to the checkout with it, but I went to the checkout just to show it because I wasn't getting a big shot that day. I was just trying to get some apples, I think it was. And uh, they, they turned me away and I was like, if I can't pay for it, what am I supposed to do? And it's because they you needed a label and they're trying to explain it. And it just, <laughs> we got there eventually. But uh, yeah, you have to kind of weigh and print your own labels here. But in some countries, you can't do that. <laughs> Thing that's kind of been ongoing. So these are courgettes, for example, but you have, they're imperfectly arranged. And you see how massive these are. <laughs> 
So there's a few different uh, ways to look at it. With Asda doing a wonky veg box. So what that means basically under EU rules that were very um, narrow categories for fruits and vegetables. So if you had a crop of, I don't know, cauliflower that was slightly too yellow, farmers couldn't sell it, it was going to waste because it didn't meet the requirements for being sold in store. Just because it was, it was, the color wasn't quite right or maybe if you buy a carrot and it's all wonky instead of straight and things like that. So to try and reduce food wastage, Asda started a wonky veg box that you got for cheaper because it was kind of misshapen or whatever. And a lot of the supermarkets have um, followed suit saying, you know, let's reduce wastage. Let's say, okay, you can have this one. It looks less perfect, but it's still exactly the same. So a lot of the um, stores own like value ranges for the lower budgets will now include things like, uh, like the, um, the wonky veg just to kind of help people out like well not help people out they're making money on it they're a business but to to allow lower budgets to to have more access and to just stop wasting food i mean how ridiculous it's a little bit bent so we can't sell it even though it's perfectly good because so much food is is was is and continues to be lost for no good reason what are the rules in buying alcohol in other places because i know like here if the store has a license you can sell alcohol in a supermarket but obviously you still have to be above a certain age to buy it but after a certain time they can't sell it like the, the tools won't process it and um, on Sundays like they pull down covers over the alcohol section uh, because they're not allowed to sell it on Sundays um, in Sweden I remember when I lived there you had to go to the system bologet which was like a, a state-owned I think it was state-owned um, alcohol shop and you couldn't get it in supermarkets though sometimes the system bologet was uh, was attached to to kind of a big store but it was um, it was just something you couldn't do within within the store itself so it makes me wonder like with America do you have to go to a liquor store for everything or can you buy wine in a grocery store and just do liquor like hard liquors in other stores like how does it work because here you can get it all in the supermarket obviously with id and stuff and uh, that's actually one of the reasons when they did the big move around here they made these aisles more visible to the tills to try and stop theft so it's right in the middle and it's quite open now so you can see here like we have wines and uh, rosés beers and then you go on to some of sort of the bigger the harder liquors I should say and then we have the under 25 uh, rule so this is just oh yeah this is finished so have a few look how cute this is <laughs> but you have a few like gift sets and things but it's totally okay to buy with your um, with your shopping and I just wondered if that was the case abroad last thing before I go um, you know how you have water enhancers in the US we have squash and it's hard to <laughs> It's hard to explain, but basically you put a little bit into the bottom of a cup and then you add water and it makes squash. <laughs> so it's a bit like a water enhancer, but it's not quite the same thing. It looks like this. Usually in when I lived in America, they would have these uh, packs of concentrate frozen. And um, so you would you would uh, add water to that and it would make like orange juice. This doesn't. This is a different drink. <laughs> So you, you add, uh, you just put a bit in the bottom of a glass and you add water to it and it, and it makes, we just call it squash. But um, it, it's a little bit different than actual fruit concentrate, so it's kind of hard to explain. But it works the same way that, you know, those drops you put into water, the water enhancers, it's the same kind of thing. You wouldn't call that juice, yeah? So similar thing. Just remembered I was thinking about maybe getting some crumpets for breakfast, so I'm just going to head back to the bakery. Uh, but I've just remembered something uh, my American friends have always found strange is in the UK we don't refrigerate our eggs in store because generally our temperature doesn't get to the point where it's necessary because um, we don't tend to have extremes of temperature you know I mean I remember being in China and for a bit having to stop buying eggs because it got so hot I'd open them up and they'd be like adhered to the um, to the side of the eggshell and it was just pretty gross 
but here we don't sell them refrigerated mo for most parts i keep them in the refrigerator in like saudi obviously and they're refrigerated in saudi but here not so much and uh, when we get them home i keep mine in the fridge at home just because it's convenient but like my granddad used to have like a crockery hen and it was filled with eggs because when we were kids we used to run to it and occasionally he would hide a kinder egg in there and uh, so we'd always go and check the hen when we when we got to his house when you go to get eggs you usually see kind of just on the shelf like this and then you can pick what you want i don't need any today but i just thought i'd show you because it is generally a difference i see you just uh you just pick up a carton check it's not broken to bits as they usually are <laughs> in different countries have different rules i realize in china you used to just get these huge like piles of loose eggs and they give you a plastic bag a hope a prayer and you just pick what you wanted weigh them because they were sold by weight and then you'd have to get them home in this plastic bag just hoping for the best <laughs> oh the amount of eggs i have sacrificed to the god of groceries on my walk home was just insane <laughs> We're not fancy here, so we're going for the home brand, 33 pence. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, teacups, I'm outside, so I don't need my mask anymore. Uh, I'm just going to head back home. I usually use the walk as like a warm-up cool-down before I get to the gym. Uh, I just bought the can opener and the crumpets, so I'm not going to do a grocery haul for you when I get back. That's literally all I've got. But for those of you who are asking to see just inside the supermarket, I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's not my usual content. Don't worry, reactions aren't going anywhere. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.